You may have underestimated me if you think that I would never consider dumpster diving. If you don't know what that is, that's where you go and find treasures that someone else has thrown out. And in this past year, this is one of the things I found, and immediately I knew I wanted it. Perfect condition, all it needed was sterilized. And once I brought it home, I knew I had to show you just how to make a solar oven, very simply, so that you could cook or bake just about anything for free, using nothing more than a sunshade and a black bucket. <laughs> Don't go away. All right, so you're out of electricity and it's time to make some sort of a hot meal. Well, as long as you have a relatively sunny day, and the sunnier the better, I will definitely admit to that right now, but as long as you have a relatively sunny day and a sunshade, one of those solar shades that keeps the heat out of your car, out of the front dash, in the window, that's what this is. If you've got something like that, you could probably make yourself a solar oven. Now, you will want some kind of a bucket, and the blacker and matter the finish, the better. What I mean by that is, you don't want shiny on anything that you're hoping absorbs heat, but you want the shinier the better on anything that you want to reflect. This is going to be the perfect reflection because the back side of it is all silver. We won't use the front side that has palm trees on it. That's not going to work, so don't try that. But if you've got a silver side like this, it's going to reflect the perfect amount of light. We're going to fold it just so and put it in the top of this, but before I do that I wanted to show you this. If you don't have a solar shade like I didn't before I went dumpster diving, you may have some other version of that. And folks have used tin foil, which will work well. Um, this it happens to be a couple of those grocery bags. If any of you subscribe to or order from Amazon Fresh, or Whole Foods Market, they deliver to your doorstep in these wonderful refrigerated type bags that are made of the same thing that your solar shade is made of. So you could easily cut this up and have the same exact effect with the silver side of this as what you're going to see me make today with the solar shade. All right, let me also give you a couple of more tips before we jump into this. You want your solar shade you're going to need something to do a little bit of jerry-rigging, and if you don't know what that is, Google it. I'll bet there's a good explanation online for what jerry-rigging is, because that is all about what we're gonna do today. For me, the way I jerry-rigged mine is with these wonderful little black clips. And the bigger, the better. I didn't have big ones, though, but these wonderful clips that you can get at the office store or in your everything drawer, if you have an everything drawer, I had one big giant paper clip, so I used that. You could also actually sew it with a little bit of fishing twine, or in a pinch, you could tape it. Let me say this though, if you're going to tape any part of this so that it makes that perfect cone shape that we want, you're going to want to use black electrician's tape, not clear packing tape. The reason being is this can handle heat and it's not going to reflect any light but this can handle the heat and not melt or like uh, slide off. Whereas the clear packing tape, not only is it going to obstruct the reflective surface, but it's not made for a high heat and it's gonna come unstuck, it's gonna slip off, it's gonna be a mess. So don't even mess with clear tape, even though it, in your mind it would seem that should work. So if you wanna tape it, get black electrician's tape. That's really all you need. Now, to actually cook in this stove that we're going to make, you're going to need some sort of a vessel to put it in. And keep in mind this, the blacker the better, and the matter, the finish, the better. This enamelware, this is metal with an enamel finish on it, this works perfect, and you've probably got some antiques somewhere that are made of this. Incidentally, I use this on the campfire a lot, so it's got kind of a matte finish already with a little bit of baked on um, soot from the fire and that's perfect for this. If I were to shine this all up so it's glossy again, it would be reflecting some of the light. So I just leave that matte finish on there as long as it's not getting black on my fingers. Too bad, I just leave that black finish right on there because this is what we're going to cook inside of. 
Now, I could cook a, so a soup or something like that directly in this, but more ideally, you're wanting this to be the outside vessel that you're going to set into your solar oven. And then inside, you're gonna to want to have a little elevated foot in there, sort of like when you're canning and you don't want the, can the jars to touch the bottom of the canner. In here, the ideal is to have a little metal grate in the bottom. So if you can get a little cooking grate or a little uh, cooling sort of griddle, go ahead and put it in the bottom. But in a pinch, which is what I am in today, what works just fine are canning lids, the rings of the canning jars, just rings in the bottom. If you just set those in there, it will elevate whatever you put down into this. So that's what we're going to use today. And then lastly, you're going to want a lid to go on it. You've got two options. You can have a solid lid, and in that case, definitely use black, and the matter the better, or you can use a clear lid. And I would say the clear lid is nice because it lets you kind of keep a visual on what's baking in there, and you can kind of see things rise, or if something needs to come to a boil, you'll know when it's boiling, because this will all get clouded over and you'll see the bubbles down below. But black works exceptionally well as well for getting the heat drawn in. This doesn't absorb heat so much, but this is absorbing heat even to the top of the little cake that we're gonna bake today. We're actually going to make honey bran muffin uh, bread, a little loaf of that, just so you can see how this works. But I'm using the solid surface top as what we're going to put on over that, just so it kind of absorbs all the heat I can get to help that bread rise on top. Hey, one last thing I wanna show you that might take this up just another notch for you if you like. Michael Withers in Lebanon, Tennessee turned me on to this idea and he showed me that he had one of these. It's a programmable wired probe thermometer that actually can go into the oven or in our case, a solar oven. And it has a little wire that lets you have the actual probe of the thermometer in the oven and then it has the wire come out so you don't have to lift the lid off to find just how hot the oven is getting inside. That's what this is perfect for and for those of you who want the elite version of the free solar powered oven, you can get one of these thermometers so you can always tell just how hot it's getting inside your oven. Okay, let's get started. For the sake of time today, I am cheating just a little bit and I just went out and got a Martha White honey bran muffin mix because all I need to add is two thirds of a cup of milk. <laughs> and I thought that would be easier for us with time today. I just add a few of my own little ingredients to make it special. So I've got it in the bowl. I'm going to pour in my milk and then we're gonna give it a stir and I'll add my extras to it and we'll get it in there to cook up for us. Today I happen to be using this almond and cashew milk, although normally I would just use regular whole milk because I love that. But I had some of this and it works great when you're baking. So we'll use that. But what I like to add to almost anything is a little bit of my homemade vanilla, which I have put in the regular little vanilla container. And of course I have to add some real maple extract because no uh, honey bran muffins are complete without a little bit of that maple extract. You can put in as much as you want or not any at all if you like. And then of course you know my passionate love affair with ground Saigon cinnamon. <laughs> so we're going to put in a good amount of that. You're going to choke at how much I put in. But I'm going to put in about two tablespoons worth because I love cinnamon and because it's good for you. All right. Get that stirred in. Now you can see over here to the side while I'm stirring this, let me tell you, over here to the side I've prepared a little baking pan and the secret to this working well in the solar oven is going to be the darker the pan, the better. Just keep that in your mind, no matter what you're baking or cooking, you want darker is better and, um, and not glossy. So if you've got the extra shiny pans, they reflect light. Every bit of shininess reflects light. Just keep that in mind always for every bit of this. The shiny reflects light, so you want matte finish. You want as dull of, of uh, finish as possible to absorb the heat that is going to be given off by what reflects onto it. And um, a lot of folks will even take jars, and if they cook in jars, like if you're wanting to 
uh, boil water or something and use an old jar, you can spray paint the outside of it black with matte black spray paint and that works great. All right, this is about perfectly ready for us. I am loving it. So I've got this little pan standing by and to make it extra easy for this to do everything it needs to in a solar oven, I have made sure that I've coated the inside all with butter and then I've taken a little bit of parchment paper, not wax paper, make sure you know the difference, but I've taken and cut a little parchment paper and put that in the bottom of there and that'll just help us lift out that delicate loaf that will cook up nicely in there. Of course, the ends are a little bit exposed. That's just fine as long as they've got butter on them. But let me say, this is the miracle of um, solar oven cooking, and that is that you cannot really burn anything that you're baking in there. So we're gonna put this in there and it can absolutely be cooking all day long while I go to town and run my errands if I need to. When I come home, it will probably be finished but it probably won't be overdone. It's very, very difficult to overcook something in there since it doesn't really get very much hotter than about 330, 340 degrees at the most. All right, let's get this poured in and we'll put it in there to cook. Now I've got my little pan about two thirds of the way full. The reason for that is because it probably won't overflow like if it didn't have enough heat, but it's probably not going to rise up quite as well with that nice, big, perfect arch in the middle like you would get in a traditional oven. That's just my guess. We'll find out when it comes out. But what it will do is have a nice mound on it and be just a little bit more moist than what I would get in a traditional oven. And I am very good with moist breads like this one. So now that we've got this put together, let's go ahead and get the oven set up. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take and unravel your sunshade. And this happens to be a particularly large one, I think, but you're going to locate the little V down there at the bottom. Actually, I think that's the top that goes around the rear view mirror. That's the part we're looking for and we want to pull it toward us. And then you're going to try to emulate here in a minute. I will. You're going to try to emulate a giant waffle cone. You know how they're wrapped? So it's kind of like a cone shape giant loosely wrapped cone. So we're using this as that bottom part and we're going to fold it until it cooperates and then we'll stick it down there into the bucket. Thankfully for me, this has this little wonderful ribbon that I don't know why it's there, but I'm going to use that to clip onto uh, to make this little cone shape down at the bottom. All right, and I'm going to ultimately get it put together where that is almost making a little hole right into that bucket. And I've still got more than I need on the sides here, so I'm gonna actually fold these back and put a little clip on them because they're just gonna be in the way and catch the wind in a bad way. So on both sides, we're going to put some clippies on those. If I had the bigger ones, for sure, I know that would work better. Okay, that's one side. If you have some giant paper clips, you might be thankful for them. I'll bet I could have done this whole thing with some of these and that would have worked well. All right, I think we're close. The last thing you wanna put in the bottom is going to be some sort of a little grate, if you've got it, or if you don't, what I've got are these little metal black kind of plates. And I'm gonna use this today just because I've got it. But if I was going to use this over and over, I would probably go ahead and spray paint it with something that made it not so shiny. Because like we talked about before, anything that you want to absorb heat and not reflect it, you want to have not be shiny. But I'm gonna set that down in the bottom and your best effort is going to be to have a level surface. And you kinda of gotta do a little bit of that finagling to get that to be level. You could even use a level if you wanted, but I'm just gonna eyeball it and we'll get it set up over in the sun with some 
goodies on it. As you can see, I've already had the pan in the sun with the solar oven put together, getting hot, waiting for its chance to be an oven. So that's always gonna give you just a little leg up on this whole process. If you can have everything in place heated like this, we're just gonna set it right down in here, put the lid on, and I want you to try your very best to not let your curiosity get the best of you and lift that lid off again. I want you to just leave it right where it is. Now the only assignment you have is to get it lined up with the sun. The best way is to look right behind the bucket on the, on the ground and watch where that uh, shadow falls because if you can line it up that way, you'll know you have it right in line with the sun if the shadow falls perfectly directly behind the bucket. That's kind of the easy way to do it. We're going to leave it here and I'm going to give it at least 40 minutes before I even check it. It'll probably be perfectly done, but even if I end up having to go to run to the store and, and look at it in two hours, I'll bet it'll be just fine because it won't overcook. It probably would just be uh, not fully done at that 40 minute mark, but that's where we'll check it first. Ooh, I can't wait for this big reveal. I've got to use the hot pad to get this lid off, which is always a good sign, but look at this. This loaf turned out perfect. I can see it's just a little bit soft on top, but I love it with some moisture in it. Let's go get a cutting board and see what we've got. All right, are you ready for the big reveal? This is the actual little loaf that came out of that wonderful solar oven. Look at how well that cooked. It's absolutely perfect and super moist on top. It's had a chance to cool and all I'm going to do now is cut it and give a little taste test for you to see what that looks like. It's a little bit more moist than you would find if you had, of course, baked it in the oven, but I love moist bread. So I am going to put just a little dollop, or maybe this is a big dollop, I think this is big, <laughs> of cultured whole cream butter on that and I'm going to enjoy a bite of it right while you're watching and you can Make fun of me if you like. And I even brought out a spot of tea to enjoy with it. Well, I got crumbs down on myself and there's lots of butter. So anything with lots of butter is good, but that is delicious. That cinnamon, I taste the maple. And of course the honey bran of the honey bran muffin is fantastic. All right. I shall pour myself a cup of tea and give you a couple of last thoughts that I wanted to make sure you knew. So there are many different ways to do this. I want you to explore and absolutely have fun jerry-rigging your own setup. But keep in mind this, everybody has a different way of doing it. There are lots of right ways. There's not really very many wrong ways except for to keep away from anything that's shiny as what you're cooking in. Also. It's a very good idea to use something a lot heftier and to start a lot earlier in the morning if you want to bake something big, like even the Thanksgiving turkey can be cooked this way, or a, a whole chicken or something like that. But that's when it's good to get out that Dutch oven that's cast iron. It takes so much longer to heat up in the solar oven, but know that once it gets hot, it's going to bake it really well for a long time because it holds the heat so well. So that's a good option for that, but not for everyday baking just because it takes so long to warm up. And the other option a lot of folks like to use is that liner that you can take out of your crock pot that is made of that thick uh, porcelain, I believe, that thick crock pot with the glass lid because then you can see down into it. That's another great option. All right. I'm going to enjoy my tea. I'm going to encourage you to do your own research. One of my favorite places for recipes to use in my solar oven is sunshineonmyshoulder.com. Not shoulders, just one shoulder. sunshineonmyshoulder.com. I don't know her personally, but it looks like a delightful lady that runs that website and has so many amazing recipes you can try. Now it's your turn. Share your favorite recipe or what your favorite little hack is for making your own version of a solar oven with a sun shield. Let's meet back here next week. And until then, God bless you and go out and be a blessing to someone today. Bye for now.
you know I want to share with you a quick scripture before you go. This is out of the New Testament in the Holy Bible in Paul's letter to the Ephesians. It's in chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. It says this, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. <laughs> now go walk in love and spread the word. <laughs> I'll see you next time.